Well, it's day 10, and it's even on the 10th, so yeah, caught up. Hopefully, as long as I get this one out uh, today or tomorrow, very early of the <laughs> Teach Thought Reflective Teacher 30 Day Vlog Blog Challenge Dog Tales in the Way. So, today's will be a little interesting. I have to do five random facts, four things off my bucket list, which I don't have, three hopes as a person or as a teacher for the year, uh, two things that have made me laugh and or cry, maybe both at the same time, and one thing that I wish more people knew about me. I wonder what it will be. Well, let's get started. I've got five random facts. I sing baritone in the choir, which oh, I'm going to be late to rehearsal if I don't hurry up. I grow the majority of the food that I eat. When I wax my mustache, I use Rite Aid brand generic mustache wax. It works pretty well though. I bicycle commute into school. Except not this week because I've been sick. I play ultimate frisbee because it is the greatest sport ever invented by man. I've got four things I want to improve slash do, I guess. I guess that's sort of like a bucket list, right? This, sure, do, I'm going with it. I have all these books, but they're like good books, I think, but I don't actually know because I haven't read hardly any of them, so I want to read all, all, all my books. I want to learn how to do woodworking uh, like my grandpa used to do. I want to learn more about uh, electrical work Mostly so I don't have to pay for this anymore. I really want to go, like, pack portaging. Anybody know where I can get a cheap canoe or maybe a kayak? And my three hopes. These are things I really hope happen. Really hope that I can stack enough firewood to make it through the winter. You can see I've got this. I've got to go all the way down there. It's not looking so good for right now. This year I hope I can get a break in all the paperwork. Uh, especially if I can reduce some of the stuff coming down from the state and my BLT and my OIP and everything else. Just, man, like every year I get more paperwork, but I still have to do the old paperwork from last year. I swear, if I have to do an SLO, a common assessment, an OGT, and pilot the park, I'm going to lose my mind. I really hope that I can uh, stay centered this year. Just right there. That's, that's where I need to stay. Two things about teaching that make me laugh and or cry. Maybe laugh cry? Uh, <laughs> I'll, start with the, uh, I'll start with the sad one, I guess. Um, what makes me cry in teaching uh, a lot is uh, some of the stories of our kids. Just some of the stuff that they go through is intense. Um, I had a student, for example, in my student teaching whose mom was in jail for drugs, we think, whose dad was in the hospital. This is in the wintertime in Michigan after being shot twice and stabbed three times, who was staying with a different member of his church different nights of the week, and two nights or three nights of the week was staying with the social studies teacher in our district, who was a junior on the third time taking biology class, which is a graduation requirement. There's too many stories like that from, they're just kids, and somehow I have to help them rise above that and get them to pass a state test so that they can get a piece of paper that will allow them to get better jobs later in life when really they're just trying to survive. And that is soul-crushing in so many ways. It's, it's, it's really really hard to process and it's really hard 
but it's, it's one of the most beautiful things about teaching is that we make relationships with those kids and we get them to move. Uh, something that makes me laugh in teaching this will end on a happy note for the uh, second to last part of it. Uh, sometimes, oh man, sometimes their answers are some of the funniest things that <laughs> you could ever... Uh, oh, <laughs> like, okay, I'll, I'll give you some examples. Um, so I teach meteorology, um, flip it back and forth with uh, Vani, she, she takes it some years, I take it some years. It's an elective, we sort of pass it around. Um, I was talking about, um, you know, basically how the weather happens. And a student, this one's not as bad, I guess, uh, left out the H from, so he wrote, the sun eats up the earth, which is, you know, that's uh, kind of chuckleable. Um, <laughs> same class, same year. Uh, had this little video on glider planes and how they stay in the air. For those of you that don't know, a little meteorology lesson. The sun, when it's eating, no, heating up the earth, uh, does it differently in different spots, and the ground geography can affect that. And so, especially out west, we have these big, long expanses and these big, like, valleys and mountainy type things. The, the heat will get trapped in different ways and will raise up in these thermals. And glider planes are designed, once they're up in the air, they just glide on those thermals, sort of like a, like a chicken hawk would do, or a turkey buzzard, for the Knox County term. And so we watch this whole video going through this whole thing, and interview some of the pilots, and the next day I gave a quiz on it, because I was like, I told you, you're going to have a quiz, pay attention, blah. And the question, I was like, trying to lob up like a grapefruit-sized softball, and it was like, um... How do glider planes stay in the air? Hint, what role does the sun play? And the student wrote, Glider planes stay in the air because of jet fuel, which is made by the sun. So, in case you didn't know, the sun actually just makes jet fuel. Uh, <laughs> the freshman science class, we have this whole uh, like energy unit and talk about, like it's like Newtonian physics, but real low like level stuff, little energy work, stuff like that. Um, the question was, it was a uh, Newton's, uh, well, no, it was, it was a third law of thermodynamics type thing, you know, you know conservation of energy, conservation of mass sort of deal. Um, the question was something along the lines of, okay, you have a wind farm in the middle of the field, the wind's blowing through, it's turning the turbines, generating electricity, yay, alternative energy. Would the, at the other end of the field, if the wind turbines weren't there, would the wind be blowing any faster. So, you know, they need to talk about conversion of energy, uh, talk about like what would be lost to friction, that sort of thing. And the student wrote, yes, because the windmills generate friction. And I wish he would have just put like a period right there because that probably would have gotten a pretty good amount of points. And instead he went on with, which releases the power of God. So in case you're wondering, the, the friction just, and then there's more yeah, so those those sort of things uh, <laughs> they make me laugh, and it's yeah, like I I I know why they end up with some of these answers because they don't let them leave anything blank. I'll take double the points off if they don't like make some kind of attempt, and a lot of times it really pushes them, and they they are able to guess enough to at least get partial credit for things they would have otherwise left blank. But man, sometimes when they really don't know, they they come up with some really really funny stuff. One thing about me that I wish more people knew. This one was um, this one was a little difficult because I don't know. I used to be a very guarded, very almost secretive person, and very untrusting and cold towards others to the point like I don't know. I guess I was afraid that they would hurt me somehow, or they would use things against me, and. As I grew, and I don't know, I just, I no longer had the need for that anymore. And so I don't, I don't really hold a lot of things back. I'm very, I'm a very blunt person, uh, speak my mind probably, <laughs> probably too much of the time. For more on that, you could see where I talk about my evaluation system, for example. That's probably stuff like that going to get me in trouble sooner or later, but... One of the things I guess that I, I do hold back from a lot of people, um, I follow, well, I guess I, I incorporate the um, Sioux Native
Native American tradition into my life, and that's that's actually where this is from. The the center being, you know, the the, the place where it holds it all together. Um, this is actually a medicine wheel, a pretty predominant symbol. Um, it's it's yeah, it's, it's kind of frightening to admit that I work in a pretty small uh, conservative town, but it's really it's it's a framework for. Um, understanding the world is a framework for spirituality, it's a framework for introspection that I think a lot of people uh, don't get to access. It's, in a lot of ways it's, it's almost Eastern. I've, um, I'm, I've sat in several uh, sweat lodges, been out on um, what most people think of as a vision quest. Uh, we call it fasting or lamenting. Actually my brother who's in the seminary came to uh, his first sweat lodge, I think, or maybe, yeah, I think it was one of his first sweat lodge at and during for my fast to put me out on the hill, which was awesome that I get to share that with him, but this isn't something I really share with a whole lot of people or get to experience with a whole lot of people, so I, I wish more people knew that, I guess, because it would, um, it would make it easier, I think, for me to connect with them in a lot of ways, so. So there's, there's my list. What did you guys think about the list? There's area for the comment. You could always video response. I'm curious what's on your list. So if you're sitting there and have a little bit of extra time, uh, this was probably actually one of the hardest vlogs to put together just because I did. I had to, I had to do a lot of reflection. So good on you, Teach Thought. You, you've achieved the goal of making me a more reflective teacher.